Hi, it's Corrine, and today we are making a handmade journal. I have two pieces of medium weight chipboard cut to seven and a quarter by five and three eighths. I have a bunch of cardstock cut to seven and a quarter by five and a quarter, and it's an off white cardstock. And I have this gorgeous paper collection from Knitwit Collections called Authentic. I cut three of my papers to seven and a quarter by five and three eighths. These will cover my chipboard pieces. And this piece here, I'm showing you that it will be a pocket. Therefore, I didn't need to print out a full seven and a quarter by five and three eighths page. I will be edging my chipboard with the Distress Paint in black soot. And I did edge all of my papers in black soot Distress Ink as well. I just want to take away that white edge. So I'm going to pull out a scrap piece of paper because I'm going to use the paint and sometimes that'll get on my craft mat. So to avoid getting it on my craft mat, I'm just putting a piece of paper underneath. And before adding my papers, I will make sure that this distress paint is completely dry. I will even actually take my heat gun to it. So to add your papers, there's lots of ways you can do it. I'm using Scotch Quick Dry. You can use Mod Podge. You can use double-sided tape, anything you'd like but um, you just wanna make sure you get full coverage on it. So I like to put a scrap piece of paper over it and use my brayer to really press it down to make sure there's no bubbles in it. And the scrap paper, if any of the glue seeps out, it'll seep out onto the scrap paper. That way I'm not transferring it to the paper and making a mess that way. So I just lightly press it down, make sure it's where I want. Then I add my scrap paper and really press it down with my brayer. This way I know that it's adhered well. So now if any little paper hangs over the edge, you wanna take a nail file and go around the edges to make sure you have a clean edge. And you wanna go the same direction that your paper is glued down. You don't wanna file against the paper. It'll just rip it off the chipboard. So I'm doing that, dusting it off essentially, and now I'm going to add my papers to the backside the exact same way, and I will do the exact same thing. I did let it dry just a short time, maybe five minutes before doing, before filing it. So that shorter paper is five and three eighths by five and a half. And I'm adding the glue to the paper itself because I wasn't sure how, I didn't want to get it all over the chipboard if it didn't need to be, if I didn't need glue at the bottom of the chipboard. So again, filing it. And now because of that, it gave me a white core again. I'm going to go back quickly with my distress paint and just go around those edges one more time. I want them to look finished. You could do that with your Distress Ink as well, if you wanted to. So here are some of the gorgeous journaling cards that, or I call them journaling cards. They have beautiful sentiments on them. And I added a piece of paper from the same paper collection behind them. So it's a decorative piece of paper that I added behind it. That way um, it matched, it coordinates perfectly. So I'm just adhering all that down, giving my chipboard a, a chance to dry before continuing. And this is going to be for the, my front cover. I added two different color papers that coordinate with it. Again, just making sure it's really dry so I don't transfer ink onto the papers. I will adhere my pocket. I'm going to use little tabs that I cut to one inch by about three and a half, um, scoring them in half and folding them. And these will be my little tabs for my pocket. Therefore, my journaling cards can easily slip in and out. So I'm just gluing one of the sides to the pocket itself, and then I will glue the other side to my chipboard, along with a line of glue along the bottom so it holds my journaling pieces in. So again, I'm really pressing that down, making sure it's adhered well. And now I'm going to, I already figured out my measurements for this and I'm going to add my holes using my cinch. You can bind it any way that you want. You can place holes in yours with ribbon, however you wanna bind it. I love using my cinch machine. If you have a bind at all, that would work great as well. And so now I'm going to just add my cardstock and my covers and press down the wires. And now I'm adding in my, my journaling cards. This um, paper collection comes with beautiful sentiments. Here I cut out a little coin envelope using a gorgeous tag from the same Knitwit collections. They come with lots of tags and 
um, word sayings and lots of elements, flowers, different things like that. Knitwit Collections actually has a video where they go through everything that comes in their bundled collection. There I added a little paint chip to the pocket, which serves as a great journaling card on the back or just for decoration. And this, these letters here say notes. That's also included. It's their alpha wit. You can purchase that separate or you, it'll come in with the bundled collection. And you can cut out the middle of the letters. I let it, I let them um, stay. I didn't cut those out. And here I did print out a bow and cut out a bow from my cameo from the same paper collection so it all coordinates perfectly along with this gorgeous clock. And then there's that, my title of my page that you saw me putting together earlier with all the coordinating papers that go with it. And look how beautiful that is. I love this collection. I love the colors, the navy. Here's one of their flower clusters that come in the collection along with these navy leaves. They are just beautiful. So I wanted to work those into the cover. And now one of the flowers I'm popping up to give it some dimension. And I love adding paper flowers. I know you've heard me say this several times, but I love adding paper flowers along with the mulberry flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts. To me, it's a perfect combination. So I'm just gluing those down. And now I'm pulling out some beautiful flowers from Wild Orchid Crafts. I have some wild roses, open roses, tea roses. I'll make sure to link all the products used down in the description box. Also on my blog as well. You'll find all the links in the description box. So I'm just using, I'm just seeing what I like, kind of placing everything out and again, tucking in some of those leaves that come in the collection. Adding my bow. And when you purchase a digital collection, it is yours to keep forever. So you can print it out as many times as you'd like. I already did a large gatefold album using this collection, and this is probably one of my more favorite collections. So I wanted to make a handmade journal. I use, I write notes for everything. I'm a note taker, a note writer. It, it helps me stay organized. So I like making journals. I'm adding some of these self-adhesive pearls from Wild Orchid Crafts. I do like to add a little glossy accents just because I know that this, you know, book will be used a lot. I don't want the pearls falling off. And so now I'm tucking in a few of the hip rosebuds here and there. This is a little label that I wanted to add. It matches the paper collection perfectly. And here is one of the flat back glitter balls from Wild Orchid Crafts. I love those. Those are some of my favorite to tuck in under a flower. Here's a little bit closer look and I have some detailed photos. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Thanks so much for watching and check out the description box for both Wild Orchid Crafts and Knitwit collections.